We'll call the meeting to order. May we have roll call, please? Uh, Ms. Moore? Here. Mr. Pollock? Here. Mr. Wright? Here. Mr. Lopez? Here. Mr. Young? Here. Mr. Sheridan? Here. Thank you. If everyone would check your cell phones and make sure they're turned off. First item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from the March 8, 2016 meeting. Do we have a motion to approve? Mr. Chair, I make a motion to accept the minutes as they are. Mr. Lopez, do we have a second? Second. Mr. Sheridan, is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll call the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is public comment. This is the time for anyone wishing to speak to the board about any item other than the public meeting item tonight, which is the Evans Square subdivision. So if somebody wants to talk about the zoning map amendment um, later, this would be the time. I'm sorry, it's the other way around. Um, the Evans Square does not is not a public hearing. Is anyone wishing to speak to the board other than the applicant about that? Seeing none, we'll close public comment. The public meeting item is resolution number 3163-16, site development order 459-16, Evans Square subdivision plan. May we hear from the applicant? You state your name and address for the record. My name is David Axel, Axel Real Estate, 1757 West Broadway Street, Suite 1, Oviedo, Florida, 32765. I'm here on behalf of the property owners tonight. Uh, it's Saguaro and B.R. Chamberlain. And uh, we request approval of this project tonight. What you have in front of you is the preliminary subdivision plan and final engineering for a project that has already been approved in the conceptual development plan stage by the city council. Uh, what's in front of you complies completely with uh, that conceptual development plan and we appreciate the efforts of staff uh, to bring this forward. We're here to answer any questions tonight. I brought with me Jamie Poulos of Poulos and Bennett Engineering in case there's any technical questions. Uh, thank you very much. Are there any questions of the applicant? I have one. Can you tell us, this project obviously came before us a while back, and um, there are some considerable changes to it from what we saw then. Yes. Can you tell us about what's changed? Certainly. Uh, there were some neighborhood concerns with regard to the intensity of the project. Uh, so what had occurred is the uh, mode of development, which included rear alleys, was modified and the density was decreased. So you still have the uh, special use home, uh, which is the historical uh, Wheeler Clara Evans house, and the two lots next to it that although they're approved as single family lots are intended to be retained by BR Chamberlain for use with that. So there's fewer lots, no alleys, and so forth. Other than that, the lot widths increased to some extent, uh, but really it came down to uh, the yield and the, the mode of development. So there was a decrease in intensity of, of just a few lots. Okay, are there any questions of the applicant? Thank you. Thank you. Can we hear from staff? All right, thank you, Madam Chair. This is a request for the local planning agency to consider and make a recommendation for a preliminary subdivision plan, site development order, final engineering of a 30 residential lot development and one foundation use property. The total parcel is approximately 11.48 acres. The proposed subdivision is located on the east side of South Lake Jessup Avenue and south of Clark Street and on the north side of Hillcrest Street. The property owners are Segura, Florida three LLC and BR Chamberlain Foundation. The engineer is Mark Stelly, PE. On September 10, 2015, City Council adopted ordinance number 1623 with inclusion of a development agreement and a conceptual plan, development plan. Ordinance number 1623 changed the zoning district of the 11.48 acres from residential R1 to plan unit development. 
The effective date of ordinance number 1623 was November 9, 2015. The PUD will be governed by the non-statutory development agreement approved by ordinance number 1623. The PSP SDOFE was reviewed per the adopted non-statutory development agreement and land development code. Staff concluded that it complies with such agreement and land development code. The applicant proposes to build 30 residential units and continue the use of one foundation use property. The minimum lot area is 8,500 square feet. The minimum lot width is 70 feet. The proposed development will have one ret wet retention pond and one recreation open space area. Lot six through eight will be designated as model homes, sales office, and parking. The subdivision shall have street trees along Lake Jessup and Clark Street. Also internally to the project, there will be lot trees and street trees. All street trees are, all streets are proposed to be private. Transportation concurrency and environmental requirements have been satisfied. Portable water and sewer services will be provided by the City of Oviedo. Solid waste capacity is available through Seminole County. City Council will consider Resolution Number 3163-16 on Monday, April 18, 2016. Staff recommends that the LPA recommend approval of the Evans Square Preliminary Subdivision Plan, Final Engineering, subject to the conditions contained within Site Development Order Number 459-16. This concludes the presentation, and staff is available for questions. Thank you. Are there any questions of staff? Madam Chair. Mr. Wright. Um, I had a discussion before the meeting with you guys. Uh, obviously, the concern I had on the PSP was um, the use of the drainage, 20-foot drainage and utility easements on some of these lots, specifically like through 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and then 22, or sorry, 18 through 25, and, and then pretty much one through 10. Um, the placement of the sanitary is right down the center of the lot. The water lines are there. In the one case, I think they have a storm line down there as well. Um, now on the on page, if I'm going too fast, stop me. Uh, in the exhibits that we have for the drawings on page C2.00, um, there is notes in there, and I think I confirmed with you prior to the meeting that this was in the development agreement as well. Um, under the setback table to the right side, it has a note one that says, notwithstanding the above setback, structures shall be prohibited within utility easements. Um, I just want to be clear that the code, like section 415, we talk about accessory structures. When it comes to somebody putting up a fence, you know, one of the, I think it's number A, oh, sorry, I'm looking at it right here, um, that there is no setbacks, no setback shall be required along the rear side for a wall or a fence. Um, and I just want to make sure that that note that's in the plans is going to be covering fences, because the way it reads, it just says structures. Um, our code says accessory structures. I mean, I know it's, it's minor, but uh, my concern is that, you know, somebody's going to buy these lots because they're looking at them as, you know, they're good size, but in the backyard they have a 10-foot easement that has storm structures, a sanitary line down the middle, and water lines, and that basically when they come to want to put a fence up, which inevitably most people will do at some point, um, they're going to be told you can't do that. Um, now, as you said, they can put a fence up, with the understanding that as long as it's approved by the city that it's their cost if it has to be removed or accessed but in this case there's there's physically a utility line buried on the property line you know which would be a conflict whether they put a fence or they're not there's obviously the potential for damage somebody putting a post in um, so I guess I want to be clear that the word structures in here is covering fences and walls and such you want to answer yeah. Fences in our land development code, they are considered accessory structures. Um, according to the way the development agreement is written, no structures shall be allowed in um, the um, utility easements. Um, so in order for a fence to be allowed, we would have to change the development agreement to allow for fences. And I'm not sure if that was the intent of um, the developer at that time, but we do consider fence um, an accessory structure. 
And I, and I have complete understanding of that. My concern is that the wording in the document says what you showed me in the DA and in this, it doesn't say accessory structure. It's just referring to structures. Um, under, it says that it's the same line under primary setbacks, under ancillary setbacks, and accessory setbacks. So um, I just want to be clear that there's not going to be an issue later on after the developments in that we're going to have somebody come up to us and say, you know, that um, I want to put a fence in. Again, I guess where I'm going with this, I think I'd be much more comfortable if it read accessory structures. I can tell you the definition of structure in our land development code. It says anything constructed or erected with a fixed location on the ground or attached to something having a fixed location. Among other things, structures include buildings, boat docks, boat ramps, mobile homes, walls, fences, etc. With regards to floodways, I mean, it talks about the um, FEMA capacity. So, but okay. it so is considered you're, you're comfortable then that this the language is okay then to preclude yes to exclude um well to prohibit fences yes okay that's that's really all i was looking for is for comfort level so thank you are there any other questions of staff okay this is um a public meeting item so we don't open it up for hearing What's the board's pleasure? Madam Chair. Mr. Sheridan. I'd like to make a recommendation to recommend approval of the Evans Square Preliminary Subdivision Plan, final engineering uh, subject to conditions contained within the SDO number 459-16. Thank Second. you. Mr. Pollock, Second. thank you. Okay, is there any discussion? Nothing? Okay, we'll call the vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. This item will be considered by the city council. I'm sorry, when, Deborah? April 18th. April 18th at 6.30 in these chambers. Good luck. Okay, next item on the agenda is a public hearing item for Ordinance 1636, Zoning Map Amendment, Porcher Rezoning. May we hear from the applicant? I'm assuming it's got to be one of you two. You state your name and address for the record. Sure. My name is Hank Porche, address 1697. Pratt Place, Oviedo, Florida, 32765. Um, we're here for a zoning change from agricultural to <coughs> C2 to comply with the future land use plan in the city of Oviedo. I have Chad Lynn, who's the uh, engineer on the project, with me to answer any technical questions. And we're here to answer any questions that you might have. Can you tell us about your project and why we should approve it? it it's it's a rezone from agricultural to commercial. It complies with your future land use plan, which calls the, for that land to be commercial. Okay. Um, there, there's not much to the project right now other than getting the zoning change. Thank you. Are there any questions of the applicant? Thank you. May we hear from staff? Thank you, Madam Chair. This is a request to amend the city's official zoning map to change the zoning of approximately 10.97 acres from agricultural to commercial C2. The subject property is located on the north side of Mitchell Hammock Road and approximately 344 feet east of West Broadway Street. The owner is Truliota Mortgages and Homes, LLC, and the engineer is Chad Lynn, PE. The purpose of the zoning map amendment is to change the existing zoning district from Agricultural A to Commercial C2 zoning district. Commercial C2 zoning district is intended to accommodate the widest range of commercial activities. The proposed zoning map amendment will include approximately 10.97 acres of vacant land. The subject property measures approximately 477,853 square feet in total. The applicant wishes to designate the subject property with a commercial C2 zoning district. The subject's, pro subject's property intended use includes office and retail uses. The site contains approximately 9.18 acres of wetland. 
based on the net developable acreage of the maximum development capacity under the proposed commercial C2 zoning district is 38,986 square feet. The proposed commercial C2 zoning district is consistent with the existing commercial future land use designation and the surrounding zoning districts and existing uses. City Council will conduct a public hearing on Monday, May 2nd, 2016 to consider ordinance number 1636. It is recommended that the local planning agency recommend adoption of ordinance number 1636. This concludes staff's presentation and staff is here for any questions that you may have. Thank you. Are there any questions of staff? I have one question. Since such a large portion of this is wetlands, yes. where on the lot is the usable space? Is um, it along Mitchell Hammock or is it? Um, it's along Mitchell Hammock, okay. closer towards, towards Mitchell Hammock. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? Okay, we'll open it up for public hearing. If there's anyone here wishing to speak to the board on this matter, now's the time to do it. Seeing none, we'll close public hearing. What's the board's pleasure? Madam Chair. Mr. Pollock. I'd like to make a motion to recommend approval of ordinance number 1636. Okay, is there a second? second. Okay. Um, is there any discussion? Okay, we'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. This item will be considered by the City Council May 2nd, 2016 at 630 in these chambers. Next item on the agenda is discussion items. There aren't any listed. Does anybody have anything we need to discuss? Boy, you guys are quiet today. <laughs> uh, it's late to the party as usual, but I did think about something after Larry mentioned it, and it's just something to discuss with staff maybe at another time, but the, how we define that structure for the fencing. Those folks are inevitably then. Gonna they're going to do it one way or the other. Create a variance, or they're going to create a bowling alley back there that's going to be unmaintained by anybody. It's going to be a loss. That that ten feet. That's what you were going with. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, I thought the same thing. But you said you were comfortable with it. I. I it's it's going to be a small alleyway. Is what's going to be between yeah. the properties. And the property owners aren't going to maintain. I mean, no, it's going to be a no man zone. Which could lead to other other issues down the road as well where the kids are going to hang out. They should have been, um, they should have been tracks, tracks that were maintained by the HOA. Because otherwise, somebody puts a fence up, like I said, nobody's going to maintain it. No. There. And what they're going to do is going to put the fence right before the uh, utility line. That's what I would do. How does the city deal with that, Deborah? The property owner is responsible for maintaining the, the lot. So if the property owner is not maintaining it, of course, they will be code enforced. So each individual homeowner will be responsible for maintaining his or her own lot. I guess the, 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 the question I would have, you know, again, is those lots that have multiple fixtures back there, you know, um, and according to the, the way it's written, no accessory, no structure can be put in the utility easement, which doesn't preclude me from putting in my fence 10 feet off the back of my property line. So if I fence in the rear of my property line, mm -hmm. I'm not going to push my lawnmower around the block to go behind someone's mm -hmm. houses to maintain that 10-foot strip. Mm -hmm. It'll never get done. So Unless you put a gate, but you're not going to put a gate. Yeah, you're not going to put a gate. No. You could, I mean, you could do that now I mean, on the property, though, and put a... And from a, from a developer standpoint, fence. You know, I understand, you know, you want to show the maximum size lot, but the problem is once the lot's sold in a year from now or a year after the parts of the development's closed out and then people start actually improving their, their lot, that's usually when this, then, when this is going to become an issue for them and, 
personally in the city? Yeah, and inevitably someone is going to complain. Someone, the neighbor behind that person who put up a fence and is not maintaining that 10 foot, or that person who lives behind them is gonna start taking over that land and then there, there may be some disputes there. But um, inevitably someone is gonna complain and they're gonna to come to the city. And what's gonna happen is whoever owns the property is going to be code enforced. I was Unfortunately, the applicant was okay with that as you walked them through that definition. And they didn't. We've we've gone. Through. <clears throat> All right. He's new to the game. Kids. Oh. <laughs> well, somebody. It's, it, it's, it's a again. It's a, it's a, it's just a it's a problem that no one takes consideration of before. You know, well, it all looks good on paper and it works for them because they sell a nice big lot. Doesn't. Once they're gone, they're gone, and and all, and then we're the ones that are left with it. So, the you buffers, know, what we up. what we did with buffers is um, before it was in like a landscape easement area, and now we require that the buffers are in tracks so that the and it's dedicated to the HOA, so the HOA maintains it. Um, but we have looked at that for buffer purposes. And again, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong with the concept. The no, I mean, yeah, just, conce it's conceptually, a, it's, a, it's great. It's a purely yeah. a maintenance standpoint. Well, yeah. Right. And, but, and, and again, if you're a homeowner and you buy a lot, you don't think about it. You say, no. all of a sudden you're told, I can't, I can't, I have to block off 10 feet of the rear of my property. You know, why did I, why did I pay a premium for an oversized lot? It's mm -hmm. like I got a backdoor neighbor. He's got the fence he owns. It's his fence because it's facing the good side of mine. He doesn't maintain it at all. Mm-hmm. And that's that's exactly what's going to happen over there. Yeah. Oh well. Good luck. Any other discussion? Okay, our future meeting dates are April twelfth, April twenty sixth, and May tenth. And of course, if you know you're not going to be here, let um, Patty know. Do we have a motion to adjourn? A motion to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned.